welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. Today I have a video that a lot of you, a lot, have been asking me to do. And this is a video on clean eating on a budget. I think that there's a little bit of a misconception that eating clean or eating organic food or whole food is more expensive than traditional WW eating. Maybe eating more processed foods, snacky foods. And I think, again, there's a little bit of a misconception. For me, I snack a lot less when I'm eating whole real food. So I find that my grocery bill every week, two weeks, is about the same. Even though I'm buying organic food and healthier food, I'm not buying as much snack foods and no processed foods. So I'm finding that for me, it works out to be about the same grocery bill wise. But I know that it's hard to get started, first of all, eating a healthier whole food diet. Where do you begin and how do you combat spending so much money, especially when you're getting started and you don't have all those staple foods on hands like honey and maple syrup and nut butter and all the things that come into a clean approach to the WW program. So I'm here today to share with you some tips and tricks on how to eat cleaner on a budget. On the run from my given disaster. Speed away from the holy mind. My first tip is to plan meals that cost pennies per serving to make. Things like stews, soups, casseroles, frittatas, omelets, those types of things that you can make a large amount for pennies. This is gonna be the first step and getting more bang for your clean eating buck. Make sure that the foods that you're preparing cost pennies. Beans are really, really inexpensive. Veggies in a can and frozen are really inexpensive. Even purchasing those organic. Make sure that you are putting together meals that cost a very small amount per serving. That's the first way to not see a big dent in your budget when it comes to clean eating or eating more whole real food. Number two kind of goes hand in hand with that. Buy less meat and bulk up your meals with things like beans and vegetables. Bulk up your meals with the food that costs less. That way you have the money in your budget to buy grass-fed organic meat, hamburger, chicken, turkey breast, pork chops, and spend less money on buying so much meat and buying more beans and vegetables to bulk up those dishes. I promise you, you're not even gonna notice a difference. There has been several recipes that I've made that have half of the meat and more of the beans and vegetables and my husband has not a clue. And it tastes just as delicious, it's just as satisfying, if not more filling when you're bulking up these meals with less meat, more beans, more veggies. What about going meat free once a week? What about preparing a vegetarian or even a vegan recipe one to two times a week? That way you're not investing in so much meat, but yet you're investing in the foods that cost less, like beans, vegetables, fruits, that type of thing. So it doesn't hurt to go meatless once a week. Again, I've done this. You guys know I've made several vegetarian, vegan recipes, and my husband is none the wiser. He still loves them. To this day, one of his favorite meals was that broccoli cheddar pot pie that I made. He loves that. He absolutely loves that recipe and it's a vegetarian recipe. So by going meat free once a week, you're going to save money on buying those grass fed organic meats. And that's where the bulk of your grocery budget is going to go if you're following a cleaner approach to the WW program is buying organic pasture raised meats, eggs, that type of thing. So sub it out with a meat free night once a week. Number four is buy in bulk. This is huge. You guys buy your food as much as you can in bulk. If you remember when I I first transitioned over, I went to Costco and I bought all things clean eating in bulk. I bought chia seeds, lupin, nut butter, maple syrup, all the things that constitute a clean approach to the WW program in bulk. It's going to cost you less per serving. So it kind of goes back to the first tip that I shared. And it's also going to stock up your pantry where you're not spending a lot of money on a smaller amount of these at your local grocery store. So if you have a Sam's Club, a Costco, even like a Smart and Final or like a Cash and Carry where restaurants go to buy supplies, the best option that you can do is buy these whole foods, especially pantry stable, shelf stable foods in bulk. Buy a case of organic beans at Costco versus buying individual cans at your local grocery store. Buy a big pack of organic chicken at Sam's Club instead of pound by pound of organic chicken at the store. This is seriously, it's gonna be a big investment potentially up front, but it's going to save you a ton of money in the long run and you're gonna have all of those clean eating staples on hand. Number 
five is super important and this is buy your produce in season you're gonna pay an arm and a leg for produce veggies and fruit that are out of season so right now we're still in the winter transitioning into spring so your citrus is what's gonna be the most affordable for you your mandarins your little uh, halo cutie mandarins whatever those little things are those are what's going to be the least expensive your summery fruits your berries your watermelon your cantaloupe those are going to be a little bit more cost pricey right now so make sure that you're buying what's in season not only is it going to be cost effective it's also going to be fresher and more flavorful so it's going to be what you're going to want to choose when it's in season so with that find recipes that include those foods so I've been doing a lot of salads with strawberries and oranges and things that I can find in my local grocery store that are in season or somewhat in season and are still affordable and I will just bring on the watermelon and all those other things when the spring and summer season hit. So that's a big tip. That way you're still able to buy those fruits and vegetables organic, but you're getting the best, most flavorful ones of those for whatever season we're in. Number six is shop around. Do your research. Find the best price in your local area for these clean organic foods. You guys know I love the Thrive Market. I, in my area, and you guys, I've been to every health food store in my area. We do not have a Whole Foods or a Sprout. So I'm talking Trader Joe's, natural grocers, my local health food stores, and the most affordable place that I have found so far for my favorite organic, good shelf stable foods is the Thrive Market. Right now, the Thrive does have $20 worth of free product when you join the market. It's super affordable, you guys. It's like $60 a year. They ship your order free to your doorstep and they generally throw in some free product as well. Also, right now, the turnaround time is a little bit slower, as you can imagine, due to everything going on, but generally, they ship their orders within a couple of days. I can't find a more affordable option, and if it's free shipping to my doorstep, and it saves me from going out right now in the world, I'm in. So I will link the Thrive Market down below for you guys, but shop around. Find the most affordable option for you, whether that be at your local grocery store or an online market like Thrive. Number seven is a big one, and this is know when to skip buying organic. When I first transitioned over, the first video I put out was a video on the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen are fruits and vegetables that you absolutely should buy organic because they're heavily sprayed with pesticides. And the Clean 15 are 15 fruits and vegetables that you don't have to buy organic that are fine to buy conventional because they're not loaded with pesticides. I'm definitely going to link this video down below in the description box for you guys. If you've not seen it, make sure you check it out. It's going to make a lot of sense and you'll be able to make a list off of what to buy organic and not organic off of this video. I buy most of my fruits and vegetables organic, but you can simply go off the dirty dozen and pick those as your organic options and buy everything else conventional. This this is going to save you money and it's also going to help health wise by eating organic the fruits and vegetables that you absolutely should only eat organic number eight is don't be afraid of store brands it's okay to buy your store brand your organic store brand for me i shop at fred meyer which is also a kroger store their store brand that's organic is the simple truth organic you guys, I buy a ton of this. It's a lot more affordable, it's still organic, and it's going to save me some money. So don't be afraid of generic in store brand items. I also buy a lot of the Great Value Organic. I really like their ground beef. It's one of the only ground beefs that I can find in 93.7 that's grass-fed and organic. I also love their organic frozen vegetables. They're a lot more affordable than most places. You also know that I buy a lot of my food from Trader Joe's. I find that their organic produce is the most affordable and it's the Trader Joe's brand. So don't be afraid of generic or store brands when it comes to organic and healthy food. Number nine is take advantage of frozen fruits and vegetables. If you didn't know, whenever they freeze a fruit or vegetable, it's picked at its peak, at its freshness, and then it's frozen. So when the, your favorite fruits and vegetables aren't in season or are so expensive that you just can't work it into your grocery budget, Buy those items frozen. Frozen fruit is delicious to top yogurt with, to throw in your cereal. You can even let it thaw just a little bit and eat it. So you can still have your favorite fruits and vegetables even in the off season by picking them frozen. And I've noticed that the price difference between conventional frozen fruit and vegetables and organic is really just pennies. So it's worth spending the money, especially if those fruits and vegetables fall on the dirty dozen 
to pick them up frozen and organic. Number 10 is probably the most important tip that I can share with you, and that is meal plan. When you meal plan and you make a grocery list based off of a meal plan, you are far less likely to overspend. You're picking up the groceries that you need, the ingredients that you need for the recipes that you've planned for the week. I know for me that my grocery budget, even eating clean and all organic, has actually went down since I really stuck to meal planning and only buying the ingredients that I need for the recipes for the upcoming week. That has been huge for me. And like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not much of a snacker anymore. So I find that my grocery budget has also decreased because I'm not buying snacky foods. I don't really eat any processed food or any sugar-free, fat-free, those types of things. So I've eliminated those from my grocery budget altogether. And by sticking with a meal plan, it has really helped me financially. And I can still get all my organic grass-fed, pasture-raised, all the things that I love, and it still works within my grocery budget. You guys know I use the Carriel Meal Planner. I'll make sure that I link that down below for you. I do have 10% off. Highly recommend. It's beautiful. It has everything you need in it. It's a great way to help you plan and stay on track, and it's a great way, probably one of the best ways to keep your grocery budget in check. Number 11 is watch for sales and stock up. I know that Sprouts does a lot of BOGO, buy one, get one. I know that my local natural grocer store will oftentimes have farm raised, pasture raised, organic eggs on sale for like $2 a dozen. Take advantage of the sales and stock up, especially when it's non-perishable food. So if you're ordering off the Thrive Market, stock up on your canned goods. Stock up on all the things that aren't going to go bad. Put them in your pantry. Put them wherever you store your extra items and make sure that you just stock up whenever clean organic food is on sale. Obviously, you can't stock up on fresh fruits and vegetables, but you can stock up on frozen fruits and vegetables. So make sure that you take advantage of those good deals, those sales that are out there. Again, Costco, Sam's Club, your bulk grocers, make sure you just stock up. It's going to save you money in the long run. It is going to be, again, a bit of an investment up front, but overall it's going to save you money and you're never not going to have what good, healthy, clean food that you need on hand. And the last tip that I have for you, number 12, again, super important, don't waste food. This is where you literally can drive down the road and throw your money out the window when you're wasting food. And I have some tips and tricks for you on how not to do that. And I'm bringing these tips to you based on personal experience. You guys, we would waste so much food. We would make dinners, there would be leftovers, my husband would eat them for a day or two and then they'd sit in the fridge and we'd throw them away. I can't even tell you how much food and money I have thrown away I don't even want to think about it, but I have been very mindful since transitioning to the clean approach to the WW program to not waste food because I am buying organic, higher quality, higher priced food. I don't want to waste it. So some of my tips on how to not waste food are to store your fruits and vegetables in airtight containers. I find that if I cut up, say a cucumber or strawberries, if I store them in a glass container with a lid, remove as much air as I can out of that and put that in my fridge, I find that they last a lot longer. Use your food savers of the world. Make sure that you buy those airtight containers for your fruits and vegetables. I'm telling you, it's going to make all the world of difference so that you're not wasting that food. Another tip when your fruits and vegetables are on the verge of turning, freeze them. Throw that spinach, that kale, those bananas, those strawberries in the freezer and have those on hand for smoothies and smoothie bowls or any time that you want frozen fruit. I can't tell you how many times I have taken an avocado that's about to turn, cut it up and threw it in my freezer and use that in a smoothie or a smoothie bowl. I'm all about not wasting food. If I'm gonna spend the money in buying good, higher priced food, I don't wanna waste it. So I literally, you guys, will freeze any fruit or vegetable that I think is about to go bad and use it in smoothies and smoothie bowls. Another tip is eat your leftovers. Like I mentioned, we would eat our leftovers for a day or two and throw away the rest. So I make sure that I plan for two nights of leftovers. That way I can ensure that all of the meals that I've made throughout the week are getting eaten up. That all those leftovers are eaten by myself or my husband because let's be honest, that's what's for dinner. And if you don't want leftovers, you're on your own. And my husband generally will pick leftovers over making his own dinner just being honest. So for us, we've eliminated throwing away leftovers by having at least two nights 
sometimes three that are designated to eat up those leftovers. And lastly, again, meal prep. Meal prepping is going to save you from wasting food because you're going to prep your meals and each day you simply pull out that prepped meal, you warm it up, you eat it, you wash the container and you haven't thrown away a single bit of food. This is really important. I know for me that sometimes I do get bored of eating the same thing all week. So if you notice, I generally will prep between three and five breakfasts, three and five lunches, three and five snacks. That way, a couple of days a week, I can have something different for those meals. I can eat up maybe some of those leftovers in my fridge or some of the food that's been in my freezer or my pantry for a while and change it up a little bit, but still eat whatever food I have on hand so that it's not being wasted. So meal prepping is another great way to not waste food. So that is it my friends. Those are my 12 tips on how to eat clean on a budget. If you have any other tips, make sure you leave those down in the comments. I think it's really important to stick to the dirty dozen if you want to slowly transition to, into buying your fruits and vegetables organic. And again, you guys take baby steps. You don't have to go full bore and spend $1,000 at Costco buying every clean eating staple, just little by little eliminate the processed food and bring in the clean whole food. And eventually you'll have a pantry, a refrigerator and a freezer stocked with those clean, healthy options and you won't feel that big hit to your grocery budget. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on so you don't miss a single video. We talk all things WW on this channel and I take a clean approach to the program and I'm currently on the blue plan. I do pride myself in giving all of the points for all of the plans on my recipes. And speaking of recipes, make sure you check out my website. The link is down below. You're going to find recipes. Make sure you sign up to join my website for fun giveaways, newsletters, all the fun things happen over on my website. Check out the description box below as well for all of my discount codes, links to my favorite things, and the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you there as well. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Give this video a big thumbs up if I gave you some tips and tricks on how to eat clean on a budget, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Happy clean eating, my friends.